Okay, in this video, we're gonna show you how to bring apart up here, take some simple, quick measurements to be able to move on. Um, later, we'll talk about alignments, uh, but right now, we just wanna take some quick measurements. So let's measure, let's measure the overall thickness of a part. So let's come up here and let's click on plane. We're gonna take four hits, it's plane one. Um, we'll call it top. Okay. All right, it's coming over to the part. Let's take hits, put it in measure mode. Come down, uh, too soon. Come down, get it close. Measure, come down, take it out. Or and usually on planes, you like to try to get the further is spread. You don't want to measure a, a plane about the dime size unless that's all you've got. Um, I try to spread it out as far to the extent as I can. So we have established our top plane. Again, these numbers really mean nothing to you right now. So let's do another plane. This time we want to call it bottom. It will store it in memory too. Come over. Now we want to measure the table, the, the part on the table that it's sitting on. So let's speed up a little bit. Don't go into one of the holes. Make sure I don't hit my tips. And again, you want to kind of do the extents just right outside of where it's sitting. So let's come over. Now we have a second plane. Now, it's like, great, Todd, I got two planes. What well, am I, I, I don't know what the thickness is. So you come up here to distances. You wanna measure, right now it's the only two things is measured. So from the bottom plane to the top plane, hit okay. And it is 0.94283. So um, that gives us our overall thickness by measuring a top plane, a bottom plane, and comparing the two. All right, so now let's measure the overall length. So we're going to come up here. Here we're going to have to establish two lines. Uh, two, oops, memory, left line. We're going to call this left line. Come over. Let's measure the left line, put it in measure, drive over, take it out of measure, run back, put it in measure. We have established our left line. All right, so now I want to do another line, but I want to call it right line. It will, oh crap. All right, okay. Over, take it out, go up, over, down. Now, the 
let's go to distances. And we want a distance between. See, now it's, it's, it defaults into the right line in the top plane. I don't want that. I want the right line and the left line. Okay. And it is 5.91153 overall. All right, so now let's measure an angle. All right, so here we're going to establish an angle. Let's go up and measure the angle. Put it back in. But because we changed the part, we're going to have to do a line here and also a line at the bottom so we can establish the angle and the straight. Well, we got to know what's straight before we can compare it to it. All right, let's do another line. This one's going to be the front. You want to go into them at 90 degrees, even though the part is not sitting on the table at 90. Well, that was a little crooked, but it'll work. So we've got a front line and an angle line. Let us see what this angle is. So we want to, you see it, angle between the front line and the angle line and it is 19.537 degrees. That's almost 20 degrees. Okay. Now let's, let's measure, let's measure a counterboard depth. So in this case, we're gonna be doing it kind of like we did earlier. Let's call it top. So in this case, let's use, let's use this part because it has a counterbore from here to here. So I like to try to mimic a depth mic. Um, so a depth mic would be, you would, I guess there's two arguments out there in the world. Do we go from extents to here? Or do we go like mimicking a depth mic that's only going to be touching here? We're not going to have a depth mic with a 10 inch base to it. Um, I've always just went over the fact of kind of imitate where your, um, like a depth mic would sit. But we're going to measure four places. the depth mic is not round the base but so you can imagine if your part is is wavy and you do the extents on the top plane you're going to get probably a, a, a different variation than if you do the top plane right around the outside all right, so let's go up and do another plane. Let's call this counterbore. So now we're going to reach down inside. Don't run into the wall. All right, so now we want to do a comparison. 
depth from one plane to another, top plane to counterpoint plane, and it is 0.51776. That's how deep that plane is. Um, all right, so let's measure, a, let's do two circles. Let's do the first circle. I ain't worried about the name of them right now. So let's go up. Once you get into a, a circle, you know, we try to do four quadrants. You know, we go up, up north, south, east, west. I, I wouldn't remove my Z once I'm in there unless for some reason I have to. Uh, that way you're, you're basically establishing a circle at a certain point down inside there. All right, so that's one circle. Let's do another circle. The reason I want to do a second circle is be because I'm going to leave it the same name just because I'm trying to show you something. Um, I want to find out what the distance is between these two circles, the center to center distance. So drop it down in there. Um, let's talk about one other thing. So if you're trying to reach way down, let me zoom in real close. If you're trying to reach way down in, put it in measure mode. What you want to be careful about, zoom in a little bit more. You don't want, the ruby ball is bigger than the shank. You don't want, you never want the top of the shank to hit before, um, Hang on one second, sorry to be moving so much. Just hold on. You never want this part of the shank to hit before the ruby ball hits. If you do, we'll learn a new term. It's called shanking out. You never want to shank out which means you hit the shank before the ball hits because it gets bigger, as you see, as it goes up the top. So if you hit up here before you hit the ball, you have effectively shanked out and you will get a false reading. So there will be a question on the test. And if you've made it through this far of the video without fast forwarding it, you will probably get the answer right. But for those of you who have fast forwarded, you didn't see this, so you will probably get it wrong. All right, so uh, it doesn't really matter, north, south, east, west first. Um, go back to the center. So in a circle, you need a minimum a four, a three hits to establish a circle. Um, I'm not really caring about what the diameters are, but what I wanna know is the distance between the two circles, one and two. So now it has given me 1.999922. So that is the distance from center circle to center circle here. Now you know if you were doing it by hand, you'd probably have to take calipers and measure here to here. Take one hole, divide it by two, and add half a hole to this distance here. Or here to here, and subtract a half a hole to get it. CMMs, you don't have to do that. So back to the number of hits. You need a minimum of three hits to establish a circle. Um, I generally like to use four. I don't know what the standard is out there, but four, I like to work because it allows me to go north, south, east, and west. Um, and if you're worried about the roundness of a hole, you can set it for 50 hits. Um, again, the more hits you get, the greater the area that you're touching, so the greater your 
uh, mean would be. Um, I, I want to careful how I say this, but the more accurate you're establishing the diameter of a hole. Um, but most of the time, four hits will work fine. All right, that's just showing you some bringing it up here, throwing it down, taking a few quick measurements. Later, we'll get into alignments.